Shalom everyone, you're all here for Hebrew and Israel. As you can see, I don't have the oxygen anymore. I'm doing very well during the day. And um, things are getting better. And God, every day, every day we see I see steps moving forward. Uh, still have a cough, lungs still work, hurt a little bit. Um, limb pain has gone, has gone away. I've been able to walk outside a couple of times. My focus is much better. And so I really want to say thank you to everyone who prayed for me. Um, very helpful. I have to admit, my recovery is is moving very well. So I can't complain. <laughs> I've said this before. There was a video I did a very long time ago with uh, my friend. Um, oh, sometimes my memory doesn't work well. A friend of mine made a video. <laughs> um, and... I spoke there about prayer and, and how I believe that prayer really does help. And I discovered people prayed for me from all over the world. And, and I'm really touched by that. Um, I'm sorry my hand is shaking a little bit. Uh, there's still some motor issues with my hands. This virus is, is kind of interesting. It messes with you in a lot of different ways. I have motor issues sometimes. Yesterday I tried to use my hand to do something. My hand just wouldn't do it. It's very strange. But my recovery is going very well. For those who, who don't know, I actually also got diabetes from uh, from this virus. That's actually under control thanks to my amazing wife who's making sure I'm eating healthy. I've always ate healthy. And it was really strange. My body went from, uh, if you use the American term, from zero to 60 or the, the more European-Israeli term from zero to 100 very, very quickly. And it didn't make any sense, the whole diabetes thing, but it's genetics as well. My father, unfortunately, has diabetes, but it's under control. It's manageable. Um, and again, I believe, strongly believe this also comes from people's prayers because uh, I, didn't, I didn't share this because it was very traumatic. It wasn't easy uh, to be in the hospital there and so on, but I was supposed to be comatose. Um, when I woke up on that, Friday morning where they decided to take me to the hospital, my sugar was so high, I should have been in a comatose state and basically close to death. Uh, and when the nurse, as you can see, my focus goes sometimes. When the nurse checked my sugar, he ran to the phone and I could kind of hear the conversation going on. He's saying, look, I've got a man here with sugar is so high, he should be in a comatose. And I can hear the doctor go like, how is he awake? Now I say the almighty, I mean, he protected me the whole time, uh, but they were shocked. And right now the hospital I was in is, uh, is now using me as a, as a case study. Sorry, it's a study case. Sorry, I, words get confused sometimes as well. I apologize. I'm, st I'm still struggling a little bit, but it's wonderful to still be alive and here. But I had so many miracles happen throughout everything. It's amazing that I'm still here. I should have died at least twice. I think like something like twice, just just there. And it's just every time someone had like the, the brilliant idea to solve something. But the fact that I was awake and because my sugar levels were insane. Okay. And it was due to maybe having something which was pre-diabetes. And now I'm working on it. I haven't gone back to working out yet. For some of you don't know, I used to be a power lifter. Um, and I was super healthy. I mean, I was round, but I was super healthy. So the mere fact that I'm here is is a miracle. And, you know, unfortunately, not everyone gets miracles. And this is a question people have, people have asked me before. Why don't we see miracles? Because when you read the Tanakh, when you read the Hebrew Bible, um, and also I have a lot of friends who are not Jewish, who are Christians and so-and-so, so when you read the New Testament, there are these miracles. And, 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 and people ask me, why don't we see miracles? And the question is, are we looking in the right way? It's like the whole thing with prophecy. Is prophecy still around? Is it gone? Or is it that we're, um, we're just not listening? Our ears are not tuned to what we're looking for. Again, I know as an academic, what I'm, just, what I'm saying right now is considered to be, you know, 
uh, religious uh, religious thought, but you know, I'm I am an academic, but also a man of faith. So I balance. I try to balance both. But not everyone gets a miracle, but some of us do. I mean, every day I wake up and I thank the Almighty that I'm still here. My wife does the same thing. She was terrified. She, there was a moment. There were moments there where she was convinced that I'm I'm, I'm going to be gone, and. It's hard to share this, but there was one night I felt as if my body was giving away. Uh, this was a few days after I was hospitalized. My my saturation dropped so badly that a nurse was rushed to, to, to put a full mask on my face and pump up the oxygen and so on. And that, that pretty much saved me. But that night, before they did, before they did I felt something was going on and I, I was... I was basically starting to say a certain confession because I felt that it was it was going bad, but I'm still here, and I can breathe, and um, we have to be very grateful for every breath that we have, and to realize that we that that, that there are miracles and there are a lot of amazing things happening, and, and yes, I I know. People do die, and not everyone gets a miracle, and, and, and this is why we have to be grateful for every miracle that we get. It's not easy. I don't think it's a... I don't think the scare tactics... I mean, I don't know if scare tactics is the right word, but I don't think the way we've been scared about this virus is, is, is correct, but it's real. And when it attacks, it, it, it attacks with vengeance sometimes. I saw a lot of people walk in, walk out. There were, I mean, I was laying there on this. I was, is it laying or lying? Hmm, wonder. I was on, on this bed. Uh, maybe someone in the comments can tell me. I have to remember, I actually, I'm bilingual, but sometimes I forget certain things. And um, a lot of people came in. A lot of people came out after like two, three days. And they originally said to me that they were expecting me to be just, just you know, two, three days. And... Um, thank God someone had the wits to send me to the hospital. Another doctor had the wits to keep me there because they realized something was, was wrong. I am a statistic as well. I, I follow now the news to see how many people were in my condition. And I was a number. I mean, I actually was part of the numbers which appeared in the news. And I am one of the blessed ones to be released. So... When we read the Tanakh, we get an impression as if miracles were happening all the time. But they lived in the real world and not everyone got to see a miracle. Miracles are things that stick out. True, most people, as I said, not, most people went into the hospital, came out and they were fine. They were no, in no danger. Some people went in and never came back. I discovered a friend of mine's a mother, she was 96, but still a man I've known my entire life. His mother died. I saw people die, which I'm sharing some stuff here that, that I originally didn't want to share, but I'm, I'm putting it out there. It was horrible. But we also have to focus on the fact that there are good things and there are miracles. And especially in a case like mine, where I was, I was looking through the, the documentation for my hospitalization. It was bad. It was really bad. I, I only came to terms with it lately, and it was a miracle. And I don't want to waste this miracle. And as Hebrew and Israel, I want to continue teaching. If anyone has ideas for subjects, I mean, I have a lot of podcasts and articles in the pipes. I have articles I've written and haven't published yet. I have articles I need to translate from Hebrew to English. I have hundreds of recordings that eventually would turn into podcasts. Um, and I think the one, cause I, I, for those, most of you don't know, I actually have a lung problem. I've always had a lung problem. This would have killed me. Um, I would, I had pneumonia as a baby and I've always had lung issues. This is why I don't smoke. I mean, you shouldn't smoke in general, but I did smoke for a while. I stopped, um, you can actually see above me, uh, 
sharing some private things, but there's actually a pipe up there and so on. I used to smoke a pipe. I stopped because I realized my lungs were not holding, would not hold this. And I mean, I was smoking more for like, you know, like a professor and so on, but I was just sitting there with a pipe in my mouth. But being in the hospital and so on and, and recovering, one of the things I did that was while praying, I said, okay, God, I, I know you want something from me. And one of the things I felt was like, I need to continue this work of Hebrew in Israel. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. So thank you for listening to my uh, yammering this week. Uh, hopefully, maybe next week, I won't be in bed. I'll be sitting at my desk, but I, I will, I'll continue updating. But you should know I'm getting better every day. Uh, I woke up this morning feeling okay, then the cough came back, but it's getting better. And look for the little miracles in your life, really, and appreciate every breath that we take. The breath that Elohim put into the nostrils of Adam, it's the same word for neshima and neshama in biblical Hebrew. The word neshama does not mean uh, soul, it actually means breath. And it says, kol ha-neshama te hallelujah, hallelujah. Kol ha-neshama doesn't mean um, all the spirits, it actually means all of, all the breath, which means all creation. Everyone has a breath in their nostrils, has to praise Yah. In time, the word neshama ch- ch- changed, I said the word church, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> still the, the, the lack of focus. In, in eventually, the word neshama changed into soul or spirit, but that's something that was a latter development in in in, in uh, Second Temple Hebrew and so on. But neshama in biblical Hebrew really just mean, means breath, which relates to all living things and especially the human beings. In any case, thank you for listening to the Hebrew in Israel uh, bed yammering, <laughs> but um, truly appreciate your life. And appreciate every breath you take. Love your family. And do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. Because that's all we are. Because it says in the end of Koheret, I think that's the verse. Says, At the end of all things, fear the Lord and serve Him for that is all man is. I'm paraphrasing, but that verse speaks loud to me right now. Thank you, everyone. Kol